How's it going guys? We are back with another Anthem video. After the stream yesterday, the tweets went like wildfire. It wasn't stopping at all. We have a bunch of news to get through, lots of little tidbits, so I hope you enjoy the video. With that said, there is a bunch of new gameplay. Quite a number of people were invited to the game changers, including the likes of Arix, Mtashed, Ryan Central, Max MRM, Willis Gaming. All of these were invited and had a hands-on experience and made a bunch of videos to provide gameplay. Now, I don't just want to go to their channels and take their videos and, you know, steal their content. That's not cool. That's not fair. So I'm just going to be showing a 15, 20 second snippet of each one. And if you want to see more links to their channels and the actual video will be in the description below. So do go check it out. Give them support. And yeah. We're all here for the love of Anthem, we're all here because we are excited about the game and we want the game to succeed. So I wasn't there, I'm a bit, you know, gutted by it, but that's just the way it goes. However, these guys were there, so if you want to check out their content, the links are there, check it out. They do cover it extensively and it is a good watch. So here you see Arex playing the Colossus, it's pretty awesome. He does go into it quite extensively. It's definitely worth checking out. Willis Gaming, he's playing the Storm, playing through and trudging along and just showcasing different builds and stuff like that. So again, so again, if you're looking for Storm, that's where you want to go. Max MRM decided to go with the Vanilla Ranger. So if Ranger's your thing, that's where you want to be. That's where you want to go. Ryan Central, really cool guy. Definitely worth a... Uh, Checking out his stuff, he'd make some really good stuff. He was playing Interceptor, probably my least favourite, but I know how he really does like the Interceptor. And though he didn't have the greatest of builds with the little time he had, he does have a real down-to-earth view of the game. So definitely worth checking him out. Mtashed, who I like a lot, he's very, very PvP-minded, very, very intrinsically build-minded. He spent 60 hours on the game. So he has a ton of loot. So he's also definitely worth having a look at. Again, a link to all their videos is in the description below. Please do go check them out. Like I said, I don't want to steal other people's content. It's not cool. Someone tried it on me not long ago and it, it feels icky. So credit where credit due. They were invited, they got the content, check them out. Right, with that out the way, on to some news. And Twitter, like I said, was pretty much like wildfire yesterday. It was crazy. After the stream, it just didn't stop. So let's go through the questions I found were relevant. JP Moore asked, when getting kicked from a game for being AFK, will there be a timer penalty preventing you from joining an online fortress for absent amount of time? And pretty much for now, the answer is no. They will be keeping an eye on it. If this is abused, then they will introduce a penalty. But at launch, there'll be no penalty. So guys, don't take the piss. If you have to AFK, fine, but just don't make it a habit, otherwise penalties will be brought in. Next up, Ellie Rogers asked, when you craft a weapon from a blueprint, does the blueprint disappear? And this is pretty awesome because the answer is no. And the best thing about this is that every time you use that blueprint to craft a weapon, that weapon crafts at your level. So if you got the blueprint at level 5 and then crafted it at level 10, you'd get a level 10 weapon. Then if you crafted it at level 15, you'd get a level 15 weapon. Now I know what you're going to say, but if that's the case, why go out into the open world and get loot? Well, it costs materials, right? You need to go out into the open world to get materials, and while you're doing materials, you're going to be doing quests, you're going to be getting weapons. The blueprint itself isn't a preferred way of getting loot. They've said this time and time again. It's a supplement for you to get that piece you're missing. However, the blueprint shouldn't be what you rely on in order to get what you want. Going out into the open world, going out into strong walls, co legendary contracts is the way to go in order to get what you're looking for. Now this one I actually really liked. I asked this question a number of times as well, but I didn't get an answer. However, I don't even know how to pronounce that. But they said, is there an option to change builds on the go while playing missions or strongholds? 
or you forcefully have to go back to the forge and Fort Tarsis for that. See, I'm against this whole thing. I like it in Division where when you are out of combat, you can change your build in the open world. Ben Irving said, not at launch. We will keep an eye on this one. So if enough people actually want this, you can expect this in an update in the future. So I do urge all of you that will be playing it, get your voices out there, get your voices heard. This is a really cool feature. It will only allow you to change most likely when you're out of combat, without aggro. However, having that ability is pretty awesome and I think it's something that Anthem will need. So the next question is demo related and Kevin asked, seems to be some confusion still in the community on the demo javelins. All four will be available to pick. We start with the ranger and you can pick one more for the demo. What if we want to try the third or fourth suit? How will that work? Michael Gamble smugly said, you start with one and then you pick another. Choose wisely but maybe encourage your friend to choose the one you didn't so you can see basically how they play and how they react and how you can synergize. Essentially, you only get one javelin to pick. Everyone will start off with a ranger and then everyone will get one of three choices between the interceptor, colossus and the storm. Which one will you be picking? Me? I'm going for the fit boy. Now this next question is pretty interesting. I've seen a few games actually do this and they do it well, especially Monster Hunter. So hopefully if this is anything remotely like Monster Hunter, this is going to be absolutely awesome. Locky Prime, much like myself, asked if you are fighting enemies of two different factions, will they fight each other or will they team up to kill you? Ben Irving said they treat everyone as hostile and apply their threat rules accordingly. So if they're fighting each other and they've built up threat enough for each other, if you turn around and attack the one that the enemy is attacking, the enemy that's attacking the enemy won't be attacking you first, it will be attacking that enemy. Then when you turn your attention to that enemy, that's when it probably will turn around and attack you. As they say, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. A bunch of people were questioning whether the amount of loot that's going to be available day one would be enough. Well, this one is for you. I noticed your masterworks for Venom Darts didn't have an orange inscription. Is that normal? But having said, we decided to add more masterworks to the pool. The most rare have special properties, the others do not. Still very powerful though. So now with Masterworks, there is a two tier system. You have the lower end Masterworks, which will basically be ones without the special perks. And you have the top end Masterworks with special perks. What does this mean? It means that that list of items in the pool expanded quite a bit. And now you have even more loot to farm for. Of course, this also means that the pool is watered down even more now. So it's going to be that bit harder to get what you want. But more loot is always good, right? Right? Soviet Plasma asked, hey, in Anthem, are we going to be able to encounter other players doing their own thing in the open world, or is the map going to be instance-based? Jonathan Warner again reiterated, in free play, you will be seeing people. You will be seeing other players, much like in games like Destiny. You will see them doing their own stuff, doing their own gathering, doing their own collecting, doing their own just exploring. However, when it comes to strongholds or anything else that's instance-based, it will be instance based and you will not see anyone, but that's to be expected. So free play, you will be seeing other players all over the area. So if you see me on the PS4 on the 25th, don't forget to come over, say hi and do a little jig with your javelin. Anthony Cotton asked, what rarity items get posted back to you if you forget to collect them on a mission? Ben Irving confirmed, and this was confirmed on stream as well, masterwork and legendary only. And the reason for this, as I said in my previous video, they want to make sure that the hunt for loot doesn't get lost. Because if everything goes back to your postmaster, you'll just leave everything there. And considering the items don't actually get decrypted, you have even less reason to collect them. What they want you is to be engaged in the world at all times, in all things. This way, everything you do matters. Dan Russell asked, are contracts both regular and legendary throughout the game or just endgame? And number two, in terms of a party wipe, would you keep the loot drops that you got post checkpoint? The response was, you have to complete a lot of stuff with an agent to get the legendary contracts. So it's not gated just by level 30, but you will be pretty close. And for the second point, you do keep the loot, which is pretty damn awesome. So you're not gated by the level 30, you are gated by reputation. So doing those contracts, doing those dailies will aid you along the way in order to get the legendary contracts. Ian asked, will ultimate supers also be buffed if used inside the Rager's Rally Point? They will not. 
it buffs weapon damage only, so that's that myth out the way. This was something that was asked to me in the comment section and I sort of gave the correct answer, but now we have the official ruling on it. Michael Squires asked, is there any masterworks or legendary gear that buffs ultimates? Maybe ones that make them work differently. Ben Irving said yes, mainly to rate at which you earn ultimate and the damage done. So not only do you have gear that can improve and increase the rate in which you earn your ultimate back, allowing you to pull it off faster and quicker, but you also have gear that actually improves the damage of your ultimate. Pretty sweet stuff if you ask me. Kevin asked, love the new party widget. Suggestion though, can you add an ultimate indicator as well so we all know when party members have used or not used theirs? Ben Irving loved the idea and said it's probably something that they'll look into post-launch. Originally, you couldn't even see your party members on the list, but due to player feedback and fan feedback, they added the widget, which actually shows you their shields. So now you have some indication as to how much damage they've taken. But now people want to go even further by seeing their ultimates. And this is something that they're highly interested in doing because the players want it. So good job, Bioware. Good job. And finally, for the pre-orders with the decal that you get if you play the VIP demo, Colonel Dice asked, do you have to play the demo to get anything special or just pre-order it? And it was confirmed, you have to play the VIP demo in order to get the decal. By playing the VIP demo, your account is registered, and when the game comes out, you get sent the decal immediately. If you do not play, the decal doesn't register onto your account on that day, and therefore you don't get it. So if pre-ordering alone isn't enough, you do need to play the VIP demo if you want that VIP decal that is exclusive to players that play the VIP. And well guys, that's pretty much everything I wanted to go through. Again, go check out those videos with the Storm, Colossus, Ranger, Interceptor. All great guys, all great stuff. Check out Mtash's video as well. He's had 60 hours under his belt, unlike the others. So he played it a hell of a lot. So he's got a really good view on it. And that's pretty much it. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share. I am looking to expand and hopefully one day attend these conventions so I too can attend and grab footage and come back and show it to you all. So with your help, with your sharing, with your retweeting, with your subscribing, with your liking, I get one step closer to that reality. Thanks for watching everyone. Remain Legend.